Um, because a pyramid is my point of focus, I want to be able to look at my entire sheet of paper and decide where that, um, where that pyramid is actually going to be and attempt to draw it as well. So I'm probably going to place it here. Um, I don't want it too tall because if I make it too tall, I'm not going to be able to draw every, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to draw everything else I need to draw. So I'm going to start off with the base. And I'm going to keep my lines quite wide for now. I'm going to double check my angles and I can see I need to fix this one. Okay, so let me turn this guy off. Let's see if that helps. Okay. It keeps auto focusing, it's weird. Okay. All right, that works better. So, as soon as I lay out this, this pyramid, um, it's going to be really, really important to remember that everything else is going to uh, be compared to it. So even though I don't see this corner, I can see the angle. I can actually see from corner to corner. So I can certainly use that as a point to measure. Now this is almost evenly spaced, but because this is at a slight angle, meaning I see more of this side than this side. This side is going to be a smidgen shorter than this one. So I'm going to make it a smidgen shorter. About right here. OK, so that's what the base of my pyramid looks like. So I'm going to make an X from corner to corner. I'm going to draw a vertical. I'm going to make sure that this vertical is parallel to the sides of the paper. And now in order to draw the height, I need to compare it with its width. So OK, so the height of the pyramid the height of this pyramid is this width. So it's a little bit longer than my pencil. It's about right here. So let me double check. Actually, it's a little bit, it's wider. So it's about this wide. Okay, so it's going to be that much taller than its width, or its, yeah, its width. So I'm going to make a mark, bring it up here, there we go. So this is the height of my pyramid. I'm going to bring these lines down. They are going to be straight, I'm not going to curve them. That looks pretty close to that pyramid. All right, so next I have this cone in front of it. One of the biggest reasons why we need to use basic shape analysis and not just draw the outline of the object is because we have a base to consider. These bases, the base of this pyramid, the base of this uh, cone cannot exist in the same space. There's negative space between them. You can actually see negative space between these objects. And obviously, when you look at these objects, these bases don't overlap. So with that said, I can see that the base of this cone, the edge of it's right here. The other edge, of the other side is about right here. It's kind of a skinny cone. Oh, wait, I need to bring this out here. There we go. That's better. So 
the base of this uh, cone is an ellipse. And it's fairly flat because it is, it's almost close to my eye level, so it's going to be flat. So there's my axis for it. I'm going to draw vertical. It's parallel with this one and also parallel with the side of my paper. It's barely higher than this pyramid, just barely. All right, so. You can see I started to curve my line, so I'm going to fix it. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, so there's my cone. And I'm looking at this negative space here, and that looks pretty accurate. And I also have this negative space here. That looks accurate. And I have a little smidgen of a corner here. And also this little space, that also looks accurate. Okay, now, I have in front of this, which people on this side of the room can see, uh, there is a triangular shaped box here, and there's also an actual cube. So I'm going to look at the angle of this triangular shaped box, and I can see if I were to extend the line, it would actually hit the pyramid about right here. Now, it's not touching the pyramid. It's actually actually about a couple inches away. So the base actually starts about right here, actually about right here. Let me double check the angle again. Actually, the angle is probably closer to that. So I'm going to draw my first vertical for it. It's not that tall, it's about halfway, it's literally about halfway up this height of this, halfway the height of this um, pyramid. So it ends about right here. These angles are gonna be very similar, but I am gonna double check the angle for the top. Okay, there it is, that looks good. So I'm gonna bring this vertical down and make sure this vertical is parallel with these and also parallel with the side of the paper and it looks like I need to make this one a little bit more straight. Here we go. <clears throat> and I can see the tip of this triangle up here, the, the top of it's a triangle. It's barely like that. It's really, really small. I'm going to double check this angle here, and it looks like I need to make this a little bit flatter. There we go. That means that this, when this comes down here, it's going to be something close to that. Okay. So, the reason why I need to get this line here is because I can actually see it. The edge of this cube that's in front actually lines up with this corner up here. I can actually see it. So I'm going to use this as a guide. Linear alignments, uh, vertical alignments like this, and any horizontal alignments matter a lot when you're doing drawings like this. So I can see that the uh, when I draw the cube, I'll illustrate what I'm looking at. So I have a cube in front, so I need to draw the base of it. And it's the front of it's about right here. I'm going to double check the angle. I'm going to look at the negative space. I can see that the corner of the cube vertically is about right. Let me see, let me fix this. The, the left side of the cube is about right here. 
and that's the angle for that left side. So I'm going to double check. Okay, that looks good. And now I'm going to look at this side here. So it's a cube. Because it's a cube, this when I look at the front angle, the front the, the base of it, it's parallel with the bottom of my page. So with that, and if I have this width, and this width actually looks pretty accurate to what I see, because it's a cube, it means the front is a square, right? It has every it has six sides, and all six sides is a square. So I can do this and this, and there's my square. It actually looks like a square. So based on my alignments here and here, that my horizontal alignments here, I can actually see that the corner actually lines up with the front of this, the, the back left corner of this uh, cube lines up with the, with the front edge of this cylinder. So with that, I can begin to draw everything else. So this is, this is going to be a square. So if this is a square and it's the front edge and the top edge is parallel with the bottom of the page, that means that there's no distortion to this, to the front of this cube, meaning it's not at an angle like some of the uh, boxes that you might see up there. So with that, and if I know where this back corner is, I can do this. Um, I need to figure out where this, I need to figure out this, the top angle here, this top edge. Let me double check, and it's right there. You can actually see these two begin to converge. Okay, so with that, as long as I get these two angles, and I know this is a square, and I have the height of this edge here, I can do, create another square back here. One, two, three. Three lines. You guys can actually see the square. So the way I'm drawing this, the back corner of this is right in the middle of this box, and it's really close. So I can see I need to make it is something going on with it? Okay, so I see I need to make it a little bit taller because this back edge is not on the lower third of this box. It's actually above the halfway point. So this is about halfway. So this small correction hopefully isn't gonna be that big of a deal. Let me double check everything. Okay, so I can see that I actually made the front of this box, which I measured everything from. The front edge of this cube is actually too small. So, because I, I brought it in a little bit too tight. So it actually needs to be about right here. This is how wide the front is. So I need to reassess everything and actually redraw it to make sure it's tall enough. So the front of this cube is actually like this. Because of the front of this cube is like this, that means it changes. This angle is actually correct, but it needs to come up here. Because I already got that angle correct. OK, so that looks good. Because of that, you can see how much larger this, the, the rear um, square is going to be. So originally, it was here. Now I need to make it a little bit wider since it's a little bit taller now. There we go. So once I have this correction, this corner is past this midpoint, which I can actually see on my box. Originally it was here and it was halfway, which wasn't accurate, halfway on this width. So now I can just connect these two. I don't really have to get this angle, but I'll do, I'll do it anyway. Okay, there we go. I'm being a little bit overzealous with how tall this is. It's actually about right there. Okay, so there's the cube. 
So with a correction. And the base of it is far enough away. I have a little bit of this negative space here. I can actually, can probably bring this down just a little bit. I want to close up this negative space in here. And it looks like I may have actually made this a little bit longer. So I could just make an adjustment. But I think I'll just leave that for now. Okay, so let's look at what we have. I'm not going to erase everything. I'm just going to erase all the adjustments that I made, take out anything that I don't really need. So because I'm using an F pencil, everything is fairly light and I'm not drawing too hard because eventually I will be modifying this to make sure that it's darker. actually going to bring this in a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit more like it. Okay, so as I start to do the drawing, um, and I have, right now I have four objects up here. I'm going to start to clean it up. I'm still going to leave a lot of the work that I've, I've done on this but I at least want to clean it up a little bit so it doesn't start to get too muddled. And I need to make sure that the negative space is accurately drawn too. Okay, so that looks, doesn't look bad here. I have the pyramid, that looks good. Okay, now I have another cylinder, I'm sorry, I have another um, cone here and it's the axis is about right here because I can see the corner of it here. Its width is the same width as this box or as this cube. So I'm going to make adjustment to this cube too because I don't like some of my measurements are not quite where I want them to be. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so I guess it was this wide, and it's actually the same width as this cube, so that works good. Okay, about right there. So I'm gonna create a, a vertical axis for it. It's a little bit taller than this, it's a, a little bit taller than this uh, box here. So now I will connect the two. And create the ellipse for it. And this ellipse doesn't quite pass the edge of this cube here, so this looks good. Meaning it doesn't pass this area here. So I think I need to make it a little bit taller or bring this up just a smidgen. Okay, so here's this, here's this um, cone. And one of the reasons why I have this here, why I need to draw this first is because I have the big sphere behind it. And I can see the edge of the sphere here. And it kisses the top of this um, cone. Now, because it does this, it creates what's called a tangent. And I have to be really careful with the tangent. 
Anytime you create it, uh, anytime a tangent is created, it simply means that you're creating visual tension. So this is like, this is a classic tangent, like a needle popping a balloon. Because the point of this uh, cone is touching this, uh, touching the top of this sphere, um, it creates too much visual tension. So it's better to make it overlap or to have it come a little bit lower. So with this, I'm probably gonna make it a little bit taller. Even though it's not completely accurate to the still life, it's better for me aesthetically. I think it will look better if I just make it taller. I don't wanna put it inside of this circle or inside of this uh, sphere. So I'm gonna make it just about an inch taller it does change the angles of this, but no one will know the difference. And a tangent is fixed. So again, a tangent is when you have an object, two objects are really close together. Uh, for instance, a, another form of a tangent would be if this circle or if this uh, sphere was coming really close to the edge of this box. If it came too close to the edge of this box, I would have to separate it or overlap it. So with this one, I decided to fully overlap it instead of uh, separating it more. Okay, so this is a sphere. I need to make sure that the sphere is as round as possible, even if it goes off the paper. You can see how much real estate I'm using on my paper. I wanna be able to use as much of the paper as possible for this drawing. And when I get the line I want, I will erase what I don't need. So the finish of this drawing is gonna be very similar to that third drawing that you see there on the wall. It's gonna be super clean, super clean lines. So you wanna make sure that you're using a light pencil. Don't be using a 6B pencil to do this, to lay this out. Use a light pencil. So use a 2H pencil or an HB or an F pencil. Those will work fine. Be very careful with your spheres. Make sure your spheres are nice and round. Take your time with them. And hold your pencil like a toothbrush. Okay, so there's a sphere, and I have a box back here. I'm not gonna draw that right now. I have another sphere here and another cylinder here, um, but I only have to draw five objects. This is actually pretty big as it is. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if I draw anything else, I will probably draw the cylinder that is closest to this. Um, the thing behind here, yes, I can omit that. Um, because it is behind, but I do have this cylinder here. So I will at least lay this out initially. I'm not gonna fully draw the whole thing, but it depends on how wide it is. Okay, the width of this cylinder is as wide as this cone. So there's the base. The base of this cylinder is parallel with the bottom of this page. And obviously it's rectangular and it is about this high. That's how tall my cylinder is. Okay, so I'll at least lay it out. I'm not gonna fully draw the whole thing, but I wanna do just enough so you guys can see how you get started. And later on in the demonstration, I'll show you guys how to finish it, okay? So start off with this big pyramid first because this is gonna be your, your focal point. 
Um, and it's going to be wor what you compare everything else to when it comes to measuring. Okay? All right. Let me turn this on. There we go. Okay, as you guys start to uh, find, bring some finality to your drawing, um, you want to be able to go to each one. Now, ideally, when you go from one object to the other, it should be more or less accurate. More, more accurate than less accurate. So, I mean, it could be kind of sketchy and everything. You can see mine is, mine is kind of loose, but not in a ridiculous manner. All of, most of my, most of my verticals are nice and straight. There are some, it might be overdrawn. They might be a little bit longer than they should be. But for the most part, they're where they, where they should be. The placement is accurate. I did make an adjustment to my little friend here. Um, to make that more accurate. So now what I'm doing is going to each object and making sure that my lines are clean. So I'm kind of I'm basically doing cleanup. I'm erasing any fingerprints, any overdrawn lines. Um, I'm also making sure that I don't have any smudges. There might be some mild corrections, but I want to make sure that everything that I actually have down is fairly accurate to what I see, um, to what I see up here. And of course, I want to make sure my focal point is accurate. So I will go back to it, making sure that things actually connect. For instance, I have a little bit of this corner here. I don't want to do this or I wouldn't want to do this and bring it all the way out to here for two reasons. Number one, it's inaccurate. Number two, the reason why it's inaccurate is it looks like it would connect to this, but the negative space is off. And number two, I have a little smidgen here that I actually see of this pyramid, and I want to make sure it actually connects here but also the negative space is accurate. So it's something that it's gonna be really important that you guys take a look at in your drawing. Look at the negative space that you have, making sure that you're drawing with accuracy, making sure that your angles are correct. Um, and so even with this, this connects here, and I also wanna make sure this connects down here too at the base. If all of those, if I, if I can just go down a list of where things connect and just, you know, have a, an internal checklist, then I could just mark off those boxes and just continue to move through the drawing. So as I start to finalize, or actually as I start to clean up, I want to bring it to a point where I can actually go back to the drawing or go back to the actual object and do a final pass. So right now it's all about cleaning things up, making sure that my, my verticals are nice and parallel to each other, making sure that they're parallel to the sides of the page. If I have horizontals that are parallel to the bottom of my page, which I do, which is this one, I want to make sure that it continues to stay like that and I didn't draw an inaccurate line or inaccurate lines. So I can even use my, I have a pink pearl eraser. I think you guys have a white pearl eraser, I think. Or do you guys have the white factus eraser? Which one do you guys have? Which one? It says factus, okay, that's fine. The Factus Eraser is actually really, really good. So the Factus Eraser is a white plastic eraser, and it shouldn't smudge too much when you use it. Um, it's different than using the kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser actually works really good for cleanup and for taking away um, smudges.
So as I do this, the reason why I'm using the pink eraser is because it does scrub the surface. And if there's any lines that are dug in a little bit too deep, um, it can take a lot of those out. So I'm literally going through each object and making sure that my lines are very accurate. I will do a final pass on them and make sure that my lines are super, super straight and nice and crisp, especially with overlapping. So I will look at this one here because I, I can see that I made this one a little bit too curved. Okay, so all this is looking pretty good. That looks like a circle. And I look at it like this, and I can see I made it too thin. So I'm going to look at this again and see where I can actually fix it. So it looks like I need a little bit more volume here. This needs to come down lower. This needs to be higher. Okay, that's better. So as you guys are drawing the sphere, you want to make sure it stays a circle. So feel free to turn it so you can take a look at its shape so you can get it very, very accurate. Okay, so that's starting to work really, really good. good there. Now it's even better there. Okay, so I've already fixed my tangent already, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so I'm ready for my final pass on those. So now I'm going to clean up this and also my, my big pyramid back here. Erasing any lines I don't need. And I will do a final pass. And all this looks good in here. I want to check this sphere. This sphere actually looks really good. Okay, so I need to trim a little. Trim off a little bit here. Okay. All right, so now that I got this, I'm going to use my kneaded eraser now and scrub the surface a little bit with it because it does clean up a lot of smudges. And I can switch my hand position um, and I can also change my pencil. So I think with this, I'll use my 3B. I'll use my 3B pencil. And again, I'm going to switch my hand position so I can get a really nice clean line. I don't always have to use this, but in a tight area I will. If I can keep my hand nice and steady, I'll use I'll hold my pencil with my index finger and my thumb. So as you guys are drawing straight lines, I will tell you that there is a trick. If you're trying to connect it from here to here, try not to focus on the tip of the pencil. 
know where your end is, know where your, the end of the uh, line is going to be, and draw to it. And keep your eyes ahead of your, your hand or the tip of your pencil. It can make a huge difference um, for you to get a really nice straight line. If you, keep, if you can keep your eyes on your destination or where it's going to terminate, it can make a huge difference in the success of your, your line. So I will go through this whole thing until each area is nice and crisp, or each line is nice and crisp. So let's... Okay, so let's address this overlap here. This is a pretty critical area because it is, this is the cube and the very, one of the very first, uh, one of the first three objects that I drew. And if, if this was successful, then these other ones were gonna be successful. So I'm gonna go through this one. I'm gonna make sure that my lines are crisp. I will change my hand position. And I will use both my eraser and my pencil simultaneously. So some of you, as you guys are drawing, have implemented lines this dark from the very beginning. And now you guys are struggling trying to make adjustments to your line because it's, it's too dark and you need to lighten it up or you need to change it or erase, erase it entirely and it won't completely erase. So that's one of the uh, challenges when you guys are learning to draw in graphite because your lines can be very permanent if you overcommit to a dark, too dark of a line. So I kind of struggled a bit trying to get this sphere nice and round, but now that it is, I can 
um, go over it. I'm going to do this one first before I do the cone, since the cone is overlapping it. And I drew almost every object up there, not that I was planning on it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At least from my perspective. I know there's a pyramid over here, obviously I can't see. There is another um, cone, and you guys have a small sphere on the other side, right? So there's that over there too. So again, still some cleanup. Smudges, fingerprints that I need to get rid of. So that's where this, the, your white eraser can be really, really helpful with that. And a super sharp pencil. So the darkest pencil I would probably use is maybe a 3B pencil. Even a 2B pencil could be dark enough. Now you're not trying to get your lines black. Okay, so this is pretty close. 